I think that the neon signs and the neat motels and the things on interstate could be a, a point of interest for people to actually come and visit and see these things. Because I know that whenever I take people into town, and I have, because I'm a realtor, I have people travel all over the nation to come move to Portland. And what do I do? I drive them down the strip at night because it's really cool and it's really what makes Portland Portland. Coming from California in my past, I can kind of say that the Californication of Portland is something I don't like to see because I watched it happen in Southern California where there was beautiful architecture, beautiful signs and buildings all throughout Orange County that just went away of the adobe brick and tile that they're all those nice, cute tiki bars like the Alibi are no longer there. They, they're not relevant. They just tore them down and built these strip malls, which I, I think is horrible. Uh, Interstate Avenue is really unique because it was uh, previously Highway 99. So it was the original highway from Portland to Vancouver, from Oregon to Washington. And so it's a really classic example of an old highway and the businesses that used to line it with mom and pop motels, old restaurants. Um, it was where the tourists came through. And so in the 40s and 50s, you see um, highways at this time were built up with these wonderful businesses with uh, beautiful architecture or even just kind of funky architecture, great big signs. And um, so it is a really unique area. And I, I don't think offhand that there is another stretch that has such a wealth and diversity of neon signs as the, this area along interstate. A while ago, we started the Mid-Century Modern League, or at the time it was called the Atomic Age Alliance. We're a group of people um, trying to preserve uh, architecture in Portland for business residential um, architecture of the 50s and 60s, um, and signage, anything that has something to do with the car culture of the 1940s and 50s, and even as late as into the 60s and 70s. It had become apparent that the Crown Motel was going to be demolished and we weren't sure if we would be able to save the sign, but that was our you know, main goal. The Crown Motel sign was so important because it's one of the first big neon signs to come down on interstate due to demolition and development. And so we saw it as uh, kind of a domino effect that if the first sign, Crown Motel, was lost without any sort of involvement in the community or any kind of awareness, then it would be much easier for the next sign to go and the next sign to go and the next sign to go. So we thought it was important to kind of take a step back and look at um, the development that was coming and see if there was a way that we could try and preserve it because to see them all together can be much more impressive than just seeing one sign that's left or two signs that are left. So it's more a sense of a historic area. We met with the city, Sam Adams' office, um, BDS, um, PDC, and um, a number of interested parties, some land use attorneys, some architects, and just decided that we could, in fact, try and save the sign and that they would actually help us in that endeavor. Well, the first step was finding out if we could even save the sign, if Reach was going to give us the sign so that we could save it. Um, the second step was pulling bids and trying to, well, the second step of the first step would be pulling bids and seeing how much it was going to cost, if it was even feasible to take it down, and where it's going to go for restoration. Um, so we worked really heartily on that, trying to figure out if it's a feasible option. Once we realized it was a feasible option, then we got it down. and it's now in the restoration phase. Um, that could take anywhere from a, you know six months to a year, um, but the next step is finding a home for the, the sign itself. And, um, and with that is fundraising and um, press events and things like that to allow people to know what we're actually doing and you know garner help if they want to help. Um, and then the last step will be the whole 
um, lighting ceremony of sorts, and that will be more of a kind of a party for all our hard work, I guess. The um, city came together, the BDS and PDC, and all these people. We had almost 10 people in a room that, and within about a week of the, us finding out about this sign being, you know, a, a possibility. I mean, it was amazing how open-minded the city was and how open-minded all the different departments were, and they came together and they were interested. And there's a, there's a whole movement in Portland that people are unaware of, of how people can save these things if we just get together as a group, as a community, to save things and, that are important to the history of Portland. And, um, I wasn't really aware of that until we got together and start, started working on the Crown Motel sign. And how many people, how many architects and other people got together that were sending us emails and calling us and letting us know that they really supported what we did. And I thought, if you can get that group of people to do that, um, to save just a motel sign on Interstate, it's, it's a great opportunity for Portland for, to continue um, what we we're trying to do and, and also in other avenues of Portland as well. Let's keep history alive on Northeast Interstate.